Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Arithmetic Sequences. This is part one. Now, in the last few lessons, we have introduced the concept of what a sequence is. Remember, a sequence is just a listing of numbers. And we, in general, introduced in the last couple of lessons the arithmetic sequence and the geometric sequence. Mostly, that was just to set the stage and let you know that there are two really, really important types of sequences, arithmetic and geometric, so that you would have in one place the difference between the two. Now, we're zooming in and focusing a little bit more in on the arithmetic sequence. So what I want to do in the beginning is write the general equation down for an arithmetic sequence, and then we're going to spend some time understanding why it is the way it is, because it's not always clear why the equation is written the way that it is. We want to make sure you understand that, and then we'll solve some problems, again, building your skills with arithmetic sequences. All right, so let's just get to the punchline first. In a textbook, any textbook, algebra, calculus, uh, uh, geometry even sometimes covers this, you will come across the definition or the equation of an arithmetic sequence. So arithmet ick, arithmetic sequence, right, in general. And so what you will typically see for, an for the uh, nth term of a arithmetic sequence is the following. The nth term out in the future is equal to the first term of the sequence plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. You'll generally see this in a textbook somewhere. What we want to do is have you understand exactly why this equation is the equation for the arithmetic sequence and why it makes total sense. It isn't always clear. For instance, why is it n minus 1 in there? Why are we adding t1 to the front there instead of doing something else? Why does this thing represent an arithmetic sequence? So remember, the concept of an arithmetic sequence means it's a listing of numbers where each pair of terms, each next door neighbor terms, we call them adjacent terms, they always differ by what we call a common difference. They always differ by some, some constant number. So in the terms in the arithmetic sequence might differ by two. But that would mean every pair of, of terms next to each other has to be differing by two. Or they might differ by five, or they might differ by seven. But whatever the number is, that difference between terms has to be the same difference for every term in the sequence. Otherwise, it's not arithmetic. So we'll take a really simple example to illustrate what I'm saying here. If we have, for instance, three, and then seven, and then 11, and then 15, and ask ourselves, what kind of sequence is this? Then we can convince ourselves it is arithmetic. Why? Because we look at pairs of terms. What is the difference between these terms? You take the bigger term minus this, uh, the term more this way minus this term. So seven minus three is four. So we say the difference between these terms, we call it D, is equal to four units. But then when we subtract these terms, we again find that d is equal to 4 because 11 minus 7 is 4. And then for these two terms, we again find that d is equal to 4 because 15 minus 11 is 4. So because the difference in these terms is the same as the difference in these terms, is the same as the difference in these terms, this means it's an arithmetic sequence. Effectively, arithmetic sequences are just adding a known number to each term. So basically, to get this term, we add 4, then we add 4, then we add 4. That's what an arithmetic sequence is. All right, so just to formalize that, we will say that this is arithmetic, okay, and d is equal to 4. This is the thing we call the common difference. It means it's the uh, difference between terms that is common to every pair of terms that you pick. Now the question that I want to ask you is, Obviously, this allows us to predict, you know, the next term. We could predict the next term pretty easily and then go on and on by adding 4. But what if I want to find the 100th term? Obviously, I could continue adding 4, but I'm going to be adding forever. I'm going to have to add 4 and add 4 and add 4 and add 4. Eventually, I'll get to the 100th term and I'll have the answer. That's boring and it takes a long time. How do we write a formula down to predict what the 100th term will be without sitting there and adding and adding constantly over and over again? So let's talk about uh, find how to find t sub 100, because this is t sub 1, t sub 2, t sub 3, t sub 4. These are the different terms. How to find the 100th term. How do we do it? All right. So let's kind of write this down. We have 3, then we have 7, we have 11, then we have 15, right? And we have a bunch of terms in between. That's what the dots mean some unknown number of terms, well, that's not unknown, but a bunch of terms in there. Finally, we have t sub 100. 
So overall, there's 100 terms. There's 100 terms in the sequence, right? This is T1, T2, T3, T4, then we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so on, all the way to T sub 100. And we just said that the difference between this is 4, and the difference between this is 4, and the difference between this is 4, and because it's arithmetic, every term in the sequence differs by 4, all the way up to the 100th term. That's what we're saying. But let me ask you a question. Obviously, this is term 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we have a difference here, and a difference here, and a difference here. How many differences between terms are we going to have all the way out to the 100th term? And I think you can convince yourself that basically, between this term and this term, Whatever the next one after 15 is, is the difference of 4. And then right before the 100th term is the 99th term, the difference there is also 4. So if I look at how many differences I'm going to have all together, I'll draw a big little curly brace right here, there are 99 differences. It takes a second for you to realize that, but basically if you have 100 numbers, and you're only subtracting pairs of numbers, then how many subtractions do you have? Because you're taking them two at a time like that, there's not 100 differences, there's 99 differences. You see, because you can see the way it is here. Because you're taking pairs, that's one, two, three, four, and you keep going all the way here, there's not gonna be 100, there'll be 99 differences right there. So if I wanted to just figure out what the 100th term is, if I wanted to figure out what the 100th term is, how would I do it? If I wanted to do it manually, I would start with the first term, and I would add 4, and add 4, and add 4, and add 4, and add 4. I could add, literally, I could put plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. How many times would I do it? I would do it 99 times. I would have 99 fours here. We have a shortcut for that. It's called multiplication. So I can say, I'm going to say 99 times 4. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with the first term, and I'm adding to it, 99 quantities of 4, right? And that is going to be the value of whatever uh, T100 is, uh, the 100th term is. I start with the beginning and I add 4 99 times, and that's going to give me this guy here. You see, this guy is exactly the same form as what I have over here. So I can generalize that if I don't want the 100th term, if I just want the nth term, whatever that number is, then instead of the number three here, I'll just start at whatever the first term in the sequence is, and I will add to that. What am I gonna add to that? Notice this was 99. I had 99 differences. I, I had 100 terms and 99 differences. That means that the number in here is how, whatever term you're trying to reach, minus one. That's how many differences are there. And you're gonna multiply that by the common difference D. So this is the exact thing that we wrote down for the definition of the arithmetic sequence, but whenever I show it to you just cold like that, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Why is it n minus one? Why are you multiplying by d? And why do you add t sub one up in the top like this? The reason why is because what you're doing to find the nth term is you just start at the first term and add to that those differences, how many differences, because that's the difference between the terms, how many differences do you add? You add n minus one of them. So if you're trying to reach the 1,000th term, then you have 999 differences times whatever the difference is, and that's what you're adding to the first term. And this is why this thing is called the, uh, the definition of the arithmetic sequence. I want you to burn this in your mind so that whenever you look at this equation, you don't just memorize an equation and say, oh, I'm gonna use it. I want you to look at it and say, this is what it's telling me. Start at the first term, add differences to it. How many do I add? I add well, however term I'm trying to get to, minus one, because that's how many differences I have there. That's what it's doing. It's just doing all of the work of getting all the way to that nth term without you have to add over and over and over because you're just multiplying to get there, okay? So that's the background as to why this is the arithmetic sequence. Now what we want to do is solve a couple of problems. So what I'm going to do is write a sequence down on the board, and I'm going to ask you to find the nth term of the sequence. If you ever have a problem that it says, give me the nth term of the sequence, it doesn't mean that they want a number. It doesn't mean that I want you to tell me term number 10. If I tell you find the nth term, I want an equation that will give me any term I want if I put the number n in, so that it gives me an equation that's general for whatever term I'm trying to get to. So for instance, if I come over here and say, uh, here's a sequence, 24, 32, 40, and 48. 
and it goes on and on from here. What I want you to do is give me an equation or a the nth term of the sequence that would allow me to predict any term that I want down the road. Give me an equation that I could, for instance, pick the or calculate the one millionth term. So you need to find, uh, you need to use this arithmetic definition uh, here, or the arithmetic sequence definition. You know, or you suspect this is going to be arithmetic, so you need to find that common difference. That's the first thing. 32 minus 24, what is that equal to? That's going to be 8, right? Uh, what is 40 minus 32? That's again 8. What is 48 minus 40? That's again 8. So it's obviously an arithmetic sequence. The common difference is 8. So what you need to do is write down that the first term, t sub 1, is 24. And the common difference, common to all of these uh, terms here, is 8. And then we go back and use the equation for the arithmetic sequence, but hopefully it's not just an equation, it makes sense to you. The nth term down the road is just going to have me starting at term number one and adding to it a bunch of differences. How many of these differences do I need? Well, I need n minus one of them times uh, the common difference d, right? So I'm just starting here and I'm adding so many of these differences. Now for our particular example, the first term was 24. And then n is, uh, n is just n, you leave that alone, n minus 1 times the common difference, which is 8, okay? So then you say, you have to just do the algebra to simplify everything, 24 plus this 8 gets distributed in and becomes 8n, and then 8 times negative 1 gives you minus 8. So t sub n is, you have a number and a number, I can uh, subtract or add however you want to look at that together. So what I'm going to have is 8n uh, minus 16. Uh, actually 8n plus 16. So 24 minus 8 gives me the 16. This stays along for the ride. This is the equation for the nth term of this arithmetic sequence. And you kind of need to get used to seeing that something like this, something times n plus something in general is going to be, or, or it's going to create an arithmetic sequence. Now it's always a good idea when you write the nth term of a sequence down to make sure it works. So the easiest way to do that is to put n is equal 1. What happens if n is equal to 1? 8 times 1 is 8, and 16 plus 8, you get 24. So we say t sub 1 from this calculation should be 24. That's exactly what t sub 1 is. If we put t sub 2 in here, 8 times 2 is 16, plus 16 is 32, which is exactly what this is. And if you put t sub 3 and t sub 4, you'll get these. And this also allows you to calculate what t sub 95 is, or t sub 1034, whatever you want. You don't have to keep adding and adding and adding, you just use the equation of the arithmetic sequence. And this is why it's doing that. You're starting at the first term and you're adding to it however many differences you need to get there. All right? So all of the remaining problems in this lesson are all going to be similar. I'm just going to give you practice. What if the sequence is negative 3, negative 10, negative 17, negative 24? Dot, dot, dot. Give me an equation for the nth term of this sequence. First, see what the common difference is. Negative 10 minus uh, a negative 3, the difference here is going to be negative 7. Another way to look at that is say, to say negative 3 plus something is going to give me the negative 10. It has to be negative 7. The common difference here, negative 17 minus a negative 10 becomes plus, and so again the common difference will be 7, negative 7. And then same thing here, negative 24 minus the negative 17 becomes plus 17, so what you get again is negative 7. Again, you should be able to start here and add a negative 7 to get this, take this, add a negative 7 to get this, take this, add a negative 7 to get this. So the common difference, D, is negative 7. And term number 1 is negative 3. The common difference is negative 7. And then the arithmetic sequence at the nth term is just whatever the first term is plus n minus 1 times the common difference d. So then I just put in what I know. The nth term is the first term, negative 3 plus n minus 1 times d, negative 7. Now you have to be careful with the signs, but not a big deal. Negative 7 times n is negative 7n. Negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7. t sub n. Now you have negative 3, positive 7. That's going to give you 4 uh, minus 7n. Usually I like to flip it around, so make it negative 7n plus 4. You could leave it like this if you want. Generally I like to write the n first, but there's really no answer. I'll just keep it at negative 7n plus 4. You can, of course, write it like this if you want to. 
always a good idea to check. What would t sub 1 be? If I put a 1 in here, then that's going to give you negative 7. Negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. That's exactly what the first term is. What is t sub 2? Then if I put 2, I'll get negative 14. But negative 14 plus 4 is going to give me negative 10. That's exactly what term number 2 is. And I'll let you go down term 3 and term 4. You'll recover all of these other terms here. It's always a good idea, as I've said several times, to double check that the sequence equation that you have uh, come up with actually does generate the terms of your sequence. All right, one more to kind of get warmed up here. What if the sequence is 5, 8, 11, 14, and then on and on like this? Give me an equation for the nth term of the sequence. Well, what is the difference here? 5 minus, uh, I'm sorry, 8 minus uh, 5 is 3. This minus this is 3. And this minus this is again 3. So you know the common difference is 3. And you know the first term is 5. Then it goes back to straight into the arithmetic sequence formula. The um, nth term is the first term plus n minus 1 times d. Uh, nth term is the first term, which is 5, plus n minus 1 times, uh, so 5 goes here, 3 goes there. And then multiply through. We have 5, 3 times n is 3n, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and then you add your numbers together. I'm going to write the 3 in first. 5 minus 3 is positive 2. So you get uh, 3n plus 2, and this is the correct answer, and it's always a good idea to double check yourself. What would t sub 1 be? Put a 1 here, 3 plus 2 gives you 5. That's what I have here, t sub 2. Uh, put a 2 in here, 5 plus 2 is 7. Whoops, uh, if I put a 2 in here, 6 plus 2, of course, is not 7, it's 8. So that's correct. So put a 2 in here, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8, so it recovers here. And if you put 3 in, you have 9 plus 2 is 11, and so on, you can recover the rest of the terms. Are any of these less, are any of these problems rocket science? No, they're not rocket science. But what usually happens is when a student is solving problems, they can kind of do the kind of more basic ones like what we're doing here, but when we get to anything a little more complex, their knowledge completely breaks down because they never practiced the fundamentals and they didn't really understand what this arithmetic sequence formula really was doing. So what I want you to do now is solve all of these problems yourself. Make sure you can solve them all, you get all the correct answers. Follow me on to the next lesson. We will increase the complexity a little bit to show you how to solve arithmetic sequence problems of slightly higher complexity.